You've probably asked ChatGPT to write an email or answer a question, but what if you could build your own personal expert that knows exactly what you need? I decided to test this, so I challenged myself to build something that looks professional and actually solves a real problem. I created my own AI wellness coach that gives me personalized advice when I need it. In this video, I'm showing you my complete step-by-step -step guide using ChatGPT, OpenAI Playground, and a simple app builder called Base44. And by the end, you'll have everything you need to build any AI coach you want wellness, productivity, whatever matters most to you. Before we get into the process, I wanna thank Base44 for sponsoring this video. Now, if you wanna build an AI coach, the AI needs to understand what makes coaching effective in the first place. If you skip this step, the AI would feel a lot more generic and less helpful. So step one is to create the brain of this wellness coach. So I'm gonna head over to ChatGPT and I'm gonna ask it to research the best techniques for coaching. This is called priming its knowledge. So I'm really teaching the AI what good coaching looks like before I actually ask it to coach. Now, if you're building a different type of coach, let's say it's productivity, fitness, or language learning, this is where you would research the best practices for those specific fields instead. Now, I'm also asking it to create a prompt for me that can create an AI agent using these best techniques. And I'm also telling it how I want it to start each conversation. This foundation work determines whether your AI will feel like chatting to a real coach or just another chatbot. And here's what it's generating, a really detailed prompt that I can now use to create the brain of my wellness coach. We've got the role and mission, the voice and style, the core methods showing how it actually coaches. It's also giving us a session flow and boundaries and safety when it comes to medical advice, which is really smart. So we're gonna copy this prompt and then we're gonna head over to OpenAI Playground. This is OpenAI's testing workspace where you can experiment with different AI models before connecting them to your app. We need to test our coach here first because if it doesn't work in isolation, it's not gonna work in our app. Just so you're aware, OpenAI Playground does require purchasing credits to use. So we're gonna create a new chat, we're gonna select the GPT-5 mini model, and we're gonna paste in our detailed coaching prompt that we got from ChatGPT. Now comes the crucial test. Does this actually work? I'm gonna type hello, and we'll see what happens. Perfect, instead of just saying hello back, it immediately starts to act like a wellness coach and greets me with exactly what I asked it to do. How are you feeling today? So this tells me that the coaching methodology is working. So now that the brain of our wellness coach is working, we can move on to the visual design of the app. Okay, so we want this app to look really nice. But here's what most people don't realize. You can't just tell AI to make it look professional and expect good results. AI needs specific visual references to understand what you mean by nice. The best way I've found to make this happen is to give an actual image to AI to show it exactly what you have in mind. This is called visual prompting and I find it way more effective than describing styles and words. So I found a wellness app design I really like and I took a screenshot of it and I'm asking ChatGPT to study the visual design in detail and put the description of it in a prompt. Now it's giving me a pretty good description, but I notice that it doesn't have any actual colors or fonts being used in the image. And this is a common gap that I've noticed. AI can describe concepts pretty good, but it misses the technical details sometimes that matter the most. So I'm asking it for the exact colors and fonts so I can make sure that this is included in our instructions that we're gonna give to Base44. All right, perfect. So now I have the exact hex codes, font families, and design rules that create that premium wellness app feeling. But here's the key. I'm putting all of this into a single paragraph that I can now use as a detailed design prompt. This preparation step is what can make the difference between our app looking really amateur from one that looks really clean and sharp. Okay, so now that we have our visual instructions nailed down and the brain of our AI coach working inside of OpenAI's playground, we're gonna head over to Base44. The next thing that we need to do is connect our AI coach to Base44. Now, as you can see here, Base44 has built-in connections to popular AI services, a whole list of them. But what's powerful is that you can actually create your own custom integrations. That's exactly what we need for our personal wellness coach. To do this, we're gonna click on create with the plus sign. And I'm creating a new integration called AI Coach. This tells Base44 that we wanna connect something custom. But here's the key part that sometimes trips people up. I need the connection code from our AI Coach in OpenAI Playground. Think of it like getting the phone number to your AI Coach app so you can call it. Okay, so back in the playground, I'm saving our AI Coach setup. This creates a specific code snippet that Base44 needs to talk to our custom AI Coach. Without this step, Base44 wouldn't know how to find our coach. All right, so I'm gonna copy the node.js version. Don't worry if you don't know what node.js is. You don't need to understand it. Just follow along with the clicks I'm showing you. This code is like a bridge between Base44 and our wellness coach. It has all the technical instructions for making the connection work. 
Okay, so I'm pasting the code into base 44 under the integration content tab and then under integration prompt at the bottom of the page, I'm gonna paste that in there. And then once I've pasted that in, now I'm gonna click save integration. And just like that, our app can now talk to our custom trained wellness coach. So I'm gonna click on use this integration and now our app is hooked up to our AI coach brain from OpenAI. Now the technical connection is made so we can move on to making our app. Now here's where all the preparation pays off. I'm gonna start a chat within Base44 and I'm gonna paste in our complete design spec. So the wellness focus color palette that we got from ChatGPT, the overall style, the features all in one comprehensive prompt. So I'm asking it to design a modern mobile wellness app that has an AI coach that we can have a conversation with using a clean, minimalist, yet colorful aesthetic. Now Base44 is reading through everything and it's starting to build. And in about two minutes, here's what it's come up with. We've got a basic wellness app with multiple pages, navigation, and a clean interface. Now let's move this to mobile view because this is a mobile app. Now the first version is never perfect. It's your foundation for iteration. This is important to understand because a lot of people expect magic on the first try and get frustrated when it doesn't happen. Now, the first thing I notice here is that the app looks good, but when I try to actually use the AI coach feature, I'm getting an error message. But now I realize that the app isn't connecting to our open AI integration. Remember that API code we created? It needs a password to prove that we're allowed to access open AI's services. This is a security feature, but it's also a stumbling block. Now, after clicking around for a bit, I realized that this password needs to go under the secret section of the app settings within Base44. Okay, so I'm gonna go back over to OpenAI's Playground. We're gonna create a new security key and we'll call it Base44 Coach. Then I'm gonna go and copy that code and I'm gonna paste it back into Base44 under the add new secret part right there within the app settings. Don't worry about the technical details. It's really just a copying and pasting exercise. Think of this like giving your app permission to access your custom AI coach. This authentication step is typically required for any external AI service. Okay, so now that that's fixed, let's test it again. I'm asking, how can I get more exercise in my day? And I can see she's typing back. And now I'm getting specific, helpful advice made for my lifestyle. All right, so our AI coach is now working through the app. Having a working AI coach is great, but in terms of the overall look of the app, it's not looking like how I envisioned yet. So now we're gonna to start to add the features that take this to the next level. The next thing I wanna do is I actually wanna create a home page. So I'm gonna give it that paragraph of my design instructions that I gave it before to remind it of the look that I'm going for and ask it to update the design to match that, which will be on the home page. The reason I'm repeating the design instructions is that sometimes the AI can lose context as you make changes. Okay, so it worked for a couple minutes and it says it made changes to the home page, but I don't see a separate home tab yet. So I'm gonna ask it to create a home page tab. Okay, let's take a look at the home tab. That looks pretty good. It's looking more like the design instructions that we gave it. Now I wanna focus on creating some other elements that make this feel like an app I'd actually use every day. I'm giving it a prompt to add a daily tracker tab where I can log activities like exercise, meditation, sleep quality, and how I'm feeling every day so I can keep track of my progress over time. So after a couple of minutes, here's what we have. Actually, this tracking tab is looking really great. We have how we're feeling. We can log different things we've done for the day, like sleep, nutrition, exercise. Next, I wanted to add a session planning feature for the home screen. This will give me the ability to schedule wellness activities and actually set goals for the day. Okay, great, that's been added, perfect. Then I wanna add a calendar tab where I can see all of my planned daily sessions and tracking data. This creates a sense of progress and momentum that's key for building lasting wellness habits. Great, so now we can see the calendar's been added. Now let's test planning a new session from the homepage. So we'll click on new session and we'll call it workout and we'll just add a few details here. But there's a bit of an issue here. We don't have a way to save, so we really need to fix that. Okay, let's give it this prompt. Okay, so I'm just gonna say, when I plan a new session, there's no way to save, add a way to save and edit the record. Okay, so it says it's working, so let's test it out again. Looks like we're still missing the save button. I think the issue might be that the button is hidden behind the main menu at the bottom. So I'm gonna give it a follow-up prompt. The save is at the bottom, but the menu is in the way. Move the pop-ups so that the menu is not in the way. Update the design to match the home screen. Okay, so now it says it's working, so let's test it out. Now we actually see the save button, that's great. So let's see if it's actually saving. We'll add a new session and we'll see what it does. 
Okay, so it looks like it's saving to our calendar, but we can't see it on the home screen. Let's fix it with this prompt. All right, let's take a look now. And it looks like it's working. Everything that was on the calendar tab is now showing on the home tab. And we can also add and we can delete sessions too. Another thing I noticed is that the intensity options aren't selectable. And I know we have to fix this. So I'm giving it this prompt. Great, now the intensity only has one selection. It should have medium, low, high. Now it tried to fix it, but it didn't work. And I've had to repeat myself a couple of times, but it still isn't working. I also noticed that some of the other drop down menu items aren't working properly either. So this time, let's give it a quick screenshot of the drop down menu and tell it that none of the other menu items are working properly either and see what it does. Okay, so it worked for a couple minutes to fix it. And it looks like now it's finally working properly. Awesome. This shows why screenshots are so valuable. Sometimes describing the problem isn't enough. When something isn't working, try a different approach. Add more context, add some screenshots, or break down the request into smaller parts. I'm also going to add the ability to edit and delete sessions on the calendar tab and fix some of those responsive design issues. Let's test our ability to add our daily tracker. Perfect. This is working too. I'm also adding meditate and stretch to the daily tracker because those are really common wellness practices and stuff that I do a lot. And I'll add a button to clear the chat of our wellness coach and the ability to clear the chat history. Each improvement makes this app feel more professional and user-friendly. These details matter because it's what separates a prototype from what you'd actually want to use on a daily basis. After those improvements, I now have something that works really well. Look at the final result. We have a homepage that shows daily sessions, a calendar for long-term planning, a complete activity tracker, and most importantly, a personal wellness coach that actually understands wellness principles. After building this entire wellness app, I've learned some important strategies that will save you hours of frustration. Strategy number one is to start with the intelligence or the brain of your AI. Start by creating your smart core or your AI agent with specific knowledge and personality and then build the interface around that. This makes everything feel connected instead of stuck together. The AI should be the foundation, not an afterthought. Strategy number two is to always test on mobile. Most people will use your app on their phone or their tablet, so make sure to make it fully responsive. You can do that by just prompting the AI to make your app fully responsive. And strategy number three is to improve step-by-step. Step. Don't try to build everything in one massive prompt. Make one or two improvements at a time, test them out, and then move on to the next change. This approach is faster and you actually get better results. Master these strategies and you can build AI powered apps that actually solve real problems for real people. So there you go. We've just gone from having an idea to a fully functional wellness coach app. No coding, no development team, no massive budget. Just smart planning, the right tools and patience for this iterative process. The approach we've used here, researching first, designing with intention, building incrementally and refining based on testing, that's applicable to any AI coach app you'd want to build. A productivity coach, a language tutor, a fitness trainer, the methodology stays the same. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And if you want to learn more about how you can use AI to level up your work and your life, then click this next video.